Thanks everyone for coming this morning. I'm Tom Knox with Valley Clean Air Now. We're a nonprofit uh, that creates air quality solutions by being a bridge between government and the communities that need the help the most. Thanks to the help of the Valley Air District, we run a program called Tune In, Tune Up in the San Joaquin Valley, where we find the old, very high polluting cars uh, that are, are, over, um, are overpopulated in the valley, um, and then we fix them. Um, and uh, that's how we met the Mendoza family uh, that's here today. And um, it's taken a lot of work to get to this point where now we can offer vehicle replacements um, to the families that need the most. I see a lot of those folks here today. Thank you for all your help in doing this. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a great experience. And uh, thanks to our board, and I'd like to thank, uh, uh, we've got Eileen Reynolds here from Tone Ranch from our board. Thank you. Um, I'd like to, uh, to introduce Senate Senate President Pro Tem De Leon. Um, he's been a strong champion of environmental justice and air quality throughout California. It's thanks to his efforts uh, to increase access and ensure equality um, in access to low-income Californians uh, to the benefits that are now coming online to transition into a clean transportation fleet. Uh, this would not be possible without his support. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Tom, and thank you for all your hard work, your invaluable work uh, in the Valley. It is a beautiful day, and I don't think it could get much more beautiful than it is today. Tackling climate change and dirty air requires that policies reach all of California's communities. Every community, every community deserves clean air, not just those who can afford to live by the bay or by the ocean. Low-income Californians are disproportionately impacted by both climate change as well as other criteria pollutants, particularly black carbon, what our young children in the valley, in the Southland Basin, breathe into their lungs. They should, and they being communities, low-income communities throughout the state of California, should also benefit from our transition to a clean transportation sector. What we have today is an incredible opportunity. We have an opportunity for so many working families throughout the state to actually bundle rebates together. Credits at the federal level, rebates at the state level. We can enable lower and middle income families to retire their old polluting vehicles and actually purchase a clean vehicle, a vehicle that burns clean, whether it's electricity or whether it's hybrid giving low-income residents greater purchasing power to access electrical vehicles will create a tipping point for clean vehicle sales in the state of California. Now our goal is one million, one million clean air vehicles on California roads that will significantly reduce the pollution that's fueling, that is driving climate change in the state of California. Now, I want to give a very special thank you to the Charge Ahead Coalition. Uh, without them, we would not have been successful with uh, my SB 1275. Let's give it up for the Charge Ahead Coalition. And I also want to recognize uh, one of the finest elected officials that we have, not just in the state of California, but quite frankly, in the country. Uh, she was the architect of AB 32, uh, both her and then uh, Speaker Emeritus Fabian Nunez uh, were the driving force to realize the most progressive, far-reaching climate change policy, not in the state, not in the region, not in the country, but quite frankly, the entire world. And we owe a great debt of, of uh, gratitude to our great state senator, that is Senator Fran Pavley. Now, a couple last points. California is leading the country towards a clean vehicle revolution. And again, thank you to the Charge Ahead Coalition because without them, quite frankly, we would not have gotten uh, 1275 passed. We are well on our way to achieving cleaner air quality and meeting our climate goals. We are proving here in the state of California that you can, in fact, grow this economy because we are the seventh largest economy in the world, and move forward very progressive 
far-reaching climate change policies. So young children, young children like the ones you see here today can breathe into their lungs clean air. It's a health crisis issue. It's a civil rights issue. It's an economic issue. It's a climate issue. So with that, I'm very proud to introduce the assembly member who actually is the member representing the San Joaquin Valley area. She represents Stockton, great progressive member, and that is Assemblywoman Suzanne Talamantes Eggman. Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you all very much for being out here. I want to thank the coalition for making all of this possible and certainly thank uh, Senator De Leon for his uh, leadership, his longtime leadership on this, as well as Senator Pavley. Um, it is my great honor to be out here, and I think Senator De Leon touched on some of the, you know, we, we can make really progressive policies. We can create policies in this beautiful building that we're all so humbled to serve in uh, that we think will be transformative. But the other side of that must be families who step forward who say, I want to be a part of that too. It's not enough just for us to create policies if people aren't willing to embrace those policies after we create them to really do the work to transform uh, our entire state and community. Uh, people have heard me talk a lot about the two Californias. We got the coastal California and then the central California. And we don't always feel like we get uh, some of our fair share. So I think on a day like today, on this beautiful day like today, when we're, we're going forward with a program like this and we have a family who has stepped up a family who says, I want to be a part of this new revolution. I want to be a part of lowering greenhouse gas. A family from my community, which we've all heard a lot about our community, this community of Stockton in the paper, uh, the problems we've had, the bankruptcy, the crime, the violence. And this is a family that has not gone unscathed from many of those things. Despite that, because I think that's what we're about. We're about resilience. We're about grabbing opportunity when it arises to be able to levitate our whole families forward. We don't need other people to do it for us. Provide the policy and our folks on the ground will really make it work. So I want to thank the Mendoza family for coming out here and standing with us today. This wonderful family, six lovely girls, two of them already grad are on their way into college uh, and the rest going to follow suit. I mean, that this is, my friends, the American dream. And this is, my friends, how we transform this state and remain leader. So I want to give a huge shout out to the Mendoza family for your tenacity. And then I want to introduce uh, a huge leader in the state on this, uh, Secretary uh, Mary Nichols. Hi, good morning, everybody. I'm Mary Nichols. I'm the chair of the California Resources Air Resources Board. It's my great privilege to be the one to uh, implement the terrific legislation that has brought us here uh, today. Um, this really is a, a visionary program uh, helping Californians of modest means to replace old polluting cars with the cleanest automotive technology that's available today. It seems like kind of a no-brainer. Over here, a 1984 truck that probably gets, what, 20 miles a gallon? Uh, uh, oh, hey, hey, all oh, right, on a, on a good day, all right. <laughs> yeah. Over there, we have a two-year-old plug-in hybrid that gets 50 miles per gallon in hybrid mode and 95 miles per gallon when it's operating on the battery alone. So what's not to like about a program that cuts greenhouse gases, cleans the air, and helps families in the most polluted neighborhoods afford some of the cleanest, most fuel-efficient cars and saves them money at the pump as well? Nothing but it took leadership from the legislature, and I particularly want to single out uh, Senator De Leon because of his drive for social equity that brought us SB 535, which ensures that at least 25 percent of the proceeds from California's climate cap and trade program goes to benefit the most polluted, hardest hit communities in the state. So. The program is already working to help us clean up the air and to uh, continue California's leadership on clean air and uh, climate as well. But in addition, it also plays a role in helping the state to move forward on our zero emission efforts to transform the fleet and clean up our passenger cars and trucks. Now this is important not just for this family or other families that may benefit from this program as we move forward, but the fact is that we know that about 
uh, about 80% of the pollution that is experienced in our state today comes from about 25% of the vehicles on the road. So by going after the most polluting, oldest vehicles, we're doing something that benefits the entire community as well as the people who are involved in this effort. That 1984 truck spews as much smog-forming gases as dozens of new cars like this one. So getting it off the road is delivering real air quality and climate benefits for all of us. So the Plus Up program, which is what made this uh, possible, has an entire inventory of good quality, ultra clean cars that are now within reach of the people who can benefit most from them. And there are a whole range of other affordable cars that are convenient, clean, and fun to drive. And we have families that are ready to get into these cars. And that, uh, of course, is the other piece of the ingredient that's absolutely necessary. Real world, practical solutions to the big problem of air pollution and climate change. So I am grateful to be here today to help spread the word about this program, that the state and we're here to help and that we will be working with many families, especially in some of our most polluted communities in the Valley and Southern California. And with that, I would like to uh, introduce the representative from the San Joaquin Valley Air District who are actually making this program possible. Mr. Jordan. Well, good, good morning. Uh, the San Joaquin Valley faces some tremendous air quality challenges, and we also have a lot of economic challenges. Uh, when you look at the valley, 23 of the 30 most disadvantaged communities in the state are in our region. We also have a lot of older, dirty cars, which, which don't help on either front. They cost people a lot to operate, and they add to our pollution burden. So that's why identifying trucks like the Mendoza's truck and, and, and seeing if we can provide a better alternative is so important in our region. Um, as you can see from the chart uh, to my left here, there's some testing data from the truck, and the emissions are actually quite high. And I'd like to introduce John Peterson, uh, who is a professor of automotive technology in Modesto, uh, to actually test the Toyota Prius and compare the emissions of the new vehicle to the older truck. John? First of all, you're going to see the numbers that that truck failed at, which were considered gross polluter numbers, which means uh, in our standards in California, quite bad. Now, you have to understand also in the hybrid mode, engines usually shut off at idle, so it's kind of tricky sometimes to get a number. It's very difficult to see what, uh, what's going on with this one here, but we're looking at the two top numbers for hydrocarbons and carbon monoxide, which are the pollutants that we're really concerned with and ones that we can control. Well, thank you very much. So, um, we're going to start up the Prius. And uh, we're going to run it at a higher, what we call a high idle, which is 2,500 RPMs. What you're going to notice is, you have to put it next to your mouth. Oh, what you're going to notice is, is that the emissions are going to be negligible. And that's what's kind of the fun part of it is, because the ones that we test at our Valley Can events typically are, you know, pretty bad in terms of emissions. So when we see something like this, it's kind of refreshing to know that all the emissions that could be polluted, or could put out by the engine itself are, are being used up or efficiently. So as soon as we get it running, and if you could see the screen, the way I could tell is by the amount of oxygen that's being used up. In an efficient running engine, all the amount of air that's, you know, in the atmosphere is being used up. That's how you tell if an efficient running engine. So, uh, hello? Now we got it going? Okay. We're going to look at these two top numbers, and by the testing we did earlier, uh, you have to understand also that anything on the newer vehicles now do not get a tailpipe test. All they get is a plug-in test now that uh, samples all the electronics, and if it has a problem with the electronics, then it will fail the vehicle. So for the most part, you would not get a tailpipe test. These are just numbers that I can give you as a reflection of how good this vehicle runs. So as soon as we can get it to run, Roger? Power button on the right. <laughs> well, sometimes, you know, the, the, if you've never operated some of these vehicles, the, the owner's manuals are, are 
something you need to look at. In fact, not a lot of the newer vehicles don't come with the owner's manual. There's a CD that you have to uh, access for that because it's it saves them a lot of money by not using paper. Wow. Hmm? Well, well, can't get it to run? Well, we just move on and then we'll figure it out. Oh, it it is. All right, let's I'm pretty sure. Oh. Uh, he didn't have it out. You got to go now. Got Bring your RPMs up. The safety. Guess you don't drive away with it. Is it running now? We did it earlier. The best thing is the The numbers that we got earlier because we did run it were hydrocarbons, which are unburnt fuels, were just very negligible, maybe five parts per million. I'm just going to write that there, five parts per million. And CO was 0 0.00. You can see the difference between the two, 0, 0.00. We can't get an idle on that. So look at this one here. It was 250 parts per million and 2%, or a little over 2%. So the difference between the two is quite sufficient. Um, if I had a only have a black marker. But if we had this paper here, it would show just barely off the line. So even though they don't represent these as a, a number, it's uh, we can show you just the fact that we have it on that. that. That's, that's great. That's quite impressive. Thank you very much. Well, that's about all we can do. Um, I, finally, I would like to thank all those that made this possible, Senator DeLeon, Senator Pavle, uh, Assemblymember Talamantes Eggman, and the rest of the legislature, uh, I'd like to thank Mary Nichols for the Air Resource Board help in kicking off this program. And finally, I want to introduce Dan Jacobson, who is the State Legislative Director for Environmental California, to talk about um, the Charge Ahead initiative that uh, helped make this possible. Dan? All right, Dan. Wow. Thank you very much, sir. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is Dan Jacobson with Environment California. And it was a year and a half ago when we teamed up with the Coalition for Clean Air, Communities for a Better Environment, the Green Lining Institute, and the Natural Resources Defense Council to create the Charge Ahead campaign. And the goal of our campaign was simple, to bring a million cars, trucks, and buses onto California's roads that would be clean and ensure that communities that were in the most polluted areas, communities of color and low income, would be able to take advantage of the clean car revolution that was happening in the state of California. And to do it with polluter pays fees from oil companies and from gas companies to pay for the whole thing. And thanks to the leadership of the assembly, of the pro tem, of the senate, the governor, the chair of the ARB, the goal that we had is now a law. The ARB is now working on regulations right now that will ensure that millions of Californians from the most polluted parts of the state can get into clean vehicles. And we're going to do more than celebrate the crushing of a single car here today. We're going to celebrate California crushing its dependence upon a form of transportation that is polluting our communities and polluting our earth. And the leadership that we're showing here today in California by proving that climate change solutions are working will resonate not only in the San Joaquin Valley and not only prove that California can do it, but prove that the nation can do it. And as our leaders go to Paris to sign a binding climate agreement with the world to reduce the worst impacts of climate pollution, we can show that what happens in the San Joaquin Valley shakes up the rest of the world. Thank you all very much for your leadership. Thank you so very much, Dan. We're almost there. We're almost there. Now, I have the honor to introduce Jose and Lorena Mendoza of Stockton, who are the new owners of this 2013 Toyota Prius plug-in hybrid right here. Now, Jose and Lorena are the proud parents of six beautiful daughters all of them are honor students. Let's give it up for Alexis, Bianca, Catalina, Denali, Elise, and Faith. That's A, B, C, D, E, F. That's the A through F requirements for the UC system, you know, or A through G now. So you need one more. Yeah, one more. 
Now, Jose's story is the story of, of many folks who come to California, whether from other parts of the country or other parts of the world. Jose originally is from Monterrey, Nuevo León, Mexico. He came to the United States. He came to California. He came to the Central Valley. And he was not able to finish the 12th grade. He was not able to finish because like so many hardworking young men and women, he had to work. He had to work to help his family, help his family put food on the table for all their siblings, for his mother, and for his father. Jose is really the embodiment of the California dream. Those who come to this country and work so hard from the morning to night every single day. In the year 2000, Jose started his own business as a landscaper to provide for his great family of eight. But back in 2007, Jose also developed a heart and lung condition, pulmonary hypertension. In 2010, he had heart surgery. So obviously, Jose had many frequent stays all the way in San Francisco. And that can take an emotional toll on a family, no doubt. But when you live in Stockton and you have to travel to San Francisco constantly, that takes a toll on the finances. And you can imagine, you can only imagine what the gasoline cost back then. And you can only imagine how much was out, coming out of their pockets every single month for the visits. Now, what is very, very important to note that the good news for the Mendoza family is this rebate program. As Mary just mentioned, as Dan just mentioned, and Tom. A rebate program that offers these opportunities for working families. Again, not just those who live on the coast, whether it's in Santa Monica or Malibu or San Francisco or Sal Salido or in Palo Alto, but for working families like Assemblywoman uh, Talamantas Eggman just underscored in the San Joaquin Valley area, the most highly polluted area in the country, which is the Central Valley, in parts of Southern California, in the basin of Los Angeles. This is why this is a historic opportunity. Yo no más quisiera compartir algunas palabras muy breves en español también. Yo me siento bien honrado, me honra en la presencia de la familia Mendoza, Lorena y también este José, una familia humilde. José Mendoza y la historia de José Mendoza comenzó en México, frontera con Chihuahua, el estado de Nuevo León, cruzando la frontera en busca de una vida mejor, llegando el, al Valle Central en busca de una vida mejor, haciendo todo lo posible para mejorar la condición humana por sus familias, por sus familiares, para sus padres. Es parte del sueño dorado, el sueño del estado de California. Y hoy día es un día histórico porque vamos a entregar las llaves a un carro, un coche, este, un vehículo eléctrico. Y esto viene a través de un programa muy importante, pero un programa muy histórico aquí, a través de la coalición de Charge Ahead. ¿Cómo vamos, avanzamos para hacer todo lo posible para contrarrestar el alto índice alarmante y peligroso de carbono que existe y todos los contaminantes en el aire que nuestros hijos están respirando en sus pulmones. Por eso, estas seis niñas hermosas, hijas de Don José, y este, Lorena, Alexis, Bianca, Catalina, Denali, Elise y Faith, Fe, es una muestra que aquí sí se puede. Sí se puede con electos oficiales como la senadora Francisca Pavli. Sí se puede con Susana Eggman, Talamantes y todos nuestros colegas, particularmente la bancada demócrata de la Cámara Alta del Senado y la Cámara Baja del, de, este, de la Asamblea. The Mendoza family, with this Prius plug-in, will save roughly about $162 a month in gas. That's $162 that they can invest in CDs or downloads on iTunes for their daughters, <laughs> whatever else is that they want, you know? College. You know, for college, yes. So I want to thank Jose and Lorena for taking the initiative to qualify because Lorena and Jose, you inspire many other families who will see you driving this Prius. And we're going to see for the first time a Prius where, uh, girls, and I hope you like this, where your father is going to be listening to Los Tigres del Norte, <laughs> Vicente Fernandez, Luis Miguel, 
You don't hear that too often in a Prius driving up and down, you know, the roads of California. Maybe in a Ford Ranger, but not in a Prius, right there. So with that, it's a great honor to introduce Jose Mendoza. Let's give it up for Jose Mendoza. I just want to thank everybody um, to make this possible. Uh, all of them. It takes a lot of people to make a program like this. Um, unfortunately, some of us don't know the programs that are out there uh, for anything. Fortunately, I got lucky when I took that truck to get smogged and Veronica said, hey, would you, are you be interested in this program? And she started talking to me. I go, oh, well, yeah, make, it makes no sense not to. Um, she told me, you can get this car, take that car. I said, here's the keys. <laughs> she goes, no, 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 wait, you got to wait. I said, I said, okay, so, but it uh, took four months, and it's here. And I'm very happy and very honored and thankful for everybody that made this program possible. Uh, I hope with this, people in the valley and everywhere, that they will try to understand that this is a lot better. As soon as they, they see how many miles that car gets, <laughs> hey, they'll, they'll, if, if they're smart enough, they'll take it. Okay. Quiero darle gracias a, a todos lo que hicieron el programa posible. Um, fueron muchas gentes de, que empezaron a hacer este programa. Cuando yo oí este programa, llevé la camioneta a hacer el smog y les daban un, un voucher de 500 dólares para ayudarle a pasar el smog. Well, no iba, con eso no iba a alcanzar a, a arreglarla. <laughs> Entonces uh, fue cuando conocí a Verónica y Verónica dijo, hey, ¿quieres entrar a este programa donde te ayudamos a entregarlo? Lo entregas y te, damos, te ayudamos a comprar otro carro. Y me dijo del carro, le dije, ahí están las llaves, llévatelo. Dice, no, espérate. Oh, ok. Ya después de unos meses, ya estamos aquí. Esa troca daba <laughs> más o menos unas 15 millas por galón. Este te da 50 millas por galón. Haces matemáticas. Es fácil, fácil, fácil. So, quiero darle gracias otra vez a todos por este programa que hicieron. Y muchas gracias a todos los que hicieron este programa posible. Okay. Gracias, José. Gracias, 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 okay. gracias Thank José. Thank you. Un aplauso para Jose, por favor. And lastly, I want to say to La Familia Mendoza, to Lorena and Lorraine and to Jose and to his six daughters as well. You are the ambassadors uh, in the Central Valley, in San Joaquin, because when your neighbors and your family members see you driving that car instead of that car, and you're going to explain why and how, much, how many miles you get and how you can help clean up the air and all the contaminants as well as the carbon that goes into our atmosphere. People are going to figure out, you know what, just like what your dad said. I do the math. It makes a lot of sense to go and participate in this type of program. And that's why it's so important. Let me just emphasize one last thing. Your wherewithal and where you live in your zip code should not dictate if you have access to these types of rebates. And that is the whole thesis behind this program, 1275 in the Charge Ahead Coalition. So if you're driving an older polluting vehicle, chances are because of income level, you are polluting more. But people have to work. They have to survive. They have to pay for the rent and take care of their children. Understandable, 100%. But rebates are not just for those who drive Teslas. Rebates are also for those who don't have the financial wherewithal but should be able to participate collectively in carbon reduction policies. And that's why working with Mary Nichols and that's why working with Senator Fran Pavley and Susan Eggman Talamantes and other colleagues that we have as well as our great governor, Governor Jerry Brown, it makes a profound difference because these communities in the Central Valley, San Joaquin Valley, when they see them driving these cars, there'll be a tipping point. And that tipping point will happen Well, you'll hear so many, so many other folks participate in this program. And quite frankly, anecdotally, 
you know, you know it's success when you see so many Priuses or other types of electrical vehicles. When you hear Los Tigres del Norte, you know, or Mana blazing out from the car, you know we've done it. So with that, I just want to say one thing. Are you guys ready to crush this truck? Yeah. Are you ready to crush this truck? Yeah. Then let's do it. Can I get faith? Yes. Let's get faith. Alrighty, let's get this crusher going and let's load up this Ford Ranger truck. And then what you gonna do? All righty, everybody, Faith Mendoza is going to give the order to crush this car. And we're going to start a countdown from five. So everybody's got to join in. You ready, Faith? Okay. We're going to start from five. Okay, here we go. Five, five. ten. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're going to start from five. And we're going to four, three, two, one, zero. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. one zero. Oh my God. Here it comes. Goodbye, truck. Oh, all the memories there. Oh my God. Wow. Wow. I hope you have good insurance, Jose. We got one more thing, because it's not over yet. We just crushed this truck, this smog polluting emitter, and you want to drive off in your new car? Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. This hybrid plug-in.
¿Quién viene? ¿Quién viene? A ver, a ver. Ahí están este, las llaves. Ah, las, la foto para las llaves. Thank <laughs> you. 